Hey, welcome back to JB Breaks Free. I hope you're having a great day, a blessed day, and getting 1% better than yesterday. And breaking free from anything that's holding you back from having the best day ever and becoming the best version of yourself. And I'm doing the same. That's my purpose and my passion. Happy March. March 1st is always one of the calendar days I circle. It just kind of signifies to me that the biggest, harshest winter months are over. And spring training baseball is back. We can catch some nice weather in March, hopefully. So I hope it will be a great month for everybody. A fresh budget, a fresh savings rate, a fresh start. And I could kind of go for that um, this month. Before I get into it, we had some massive plumbing problems the last two or three days. Woke up Sunday morning and the sewer had backed up into the basement after the big fix. Guy had to go into the front yard with a backhoe and fix a pipe that was supposed to be done like nine years ago. And then we had a cleanup crew come in to clean it up and it adds up. So, But I rolled with the punches. I went with the flow. Did not get too upset. Um, it is what it is, right? It's not under our control. And hopefully now it's fixed and will be fixed for many years. And I don't have to think about this for another 10 or 15 years, hopefully. But I'm excited also about the 1st of March because I always add up all my side hustle income totals and let you guys know how I'm doing in that phase. I also want to talk about ancient wisdom, specifically a quote by Marcus Aurelius, one of my favorite philosophers. And then on yesterday's video, I talked about the four noble truths um, from the Buddha and the Buddhism philosophy. And today, I want to talk a little bit about the fourth noble truth, which is there is an eightfold path that if you follow and lead a balanced life, it will end suffering in your life. And so I want to get into those topics today. First, I'll start right off with my Instacart and side hustle income reports. I had five additional income streams outside of my main job of waiting tables uh, last month. I did not do any product tubes. I love product tube. Go download it. It's a great app. For some reason, I just I didn't have the time or drive to do it. So I, I got to step up on that one because that's a great one. But I made $426.66 from Instacart this month, part-time, a little bit in the mornings. I also took a week vacation basically this month too with the restaurant being closed. I just spent some time at home with the family and didn't crush as much side hustles as I probably could have. So the numbers are a little bit suppressed, but still, still pretty good. So 426 for Instacart. Flipping items, I made $384. That's really good total for February. Last month I had was slightly higher, but this is the kind of the time where your stuff that you find at estate sales and garage sales kinda starts wearing thin, but I still had enough to sell. I, I had some estate sales scores. I've been looking around the thrift stores. 384, that's a huge hit right there, so I'm loving that. There's a receipt app called Fetch Rewards. Download it right now. It pays out really well. I take pictures of my Instacart receipts and any other purchase receipts that we have. Take pictures of them, snap them in. I was able to cash out $10 uh, from that this month. Coin Out is another receipt rewards app. Free to get. Uh, again, I just take pictures of the same receipts. It doesn't pay out quite as well as Fetch, but I still was able to get $5.38. And then Walmart Spark Delivery. I made $382 part time. Um, I multi-app with Instacart and Spark. Those are my two main ones. I wake up in the morning right before I drop the kids off to work. I open them both up and whatever one comes up first that works for me, that's the one I take and then I turn the other one off. And it really helps with downtime and gives you more options and being free means options. So I love both of those apps. Definitely check them out. There's sign up links in the description. So those five income streams, very part-time. Uh, I'm not doing anything crazy here. I'm just out finding records and looking in thrift stores and uh, scanning some receipts. I think this is really doable. Not too many hours either for those delivery apps. The total is $1,208.04. Pretty good, pretty good. 
If you were to times that out by 12 months, it would equal just under $15,000. And boy, who couldn't use that? It takes the edge off huge. Uh, missing a week of work from waiting tables this month plus a week and a half basically that you know that month there the seven eight hundred dollars worth of instacart and spark delivery really takes the edge off of that and again allows me for freedom i had a lot of free time a lot of family time and stress-free life and not only that i used that money to pay off my debt i suggest doing the same and then you start taking control of your money building up your wealth your emergency fund and keep the ball rolling so get out there side hustle let me know what you're doing the second thing I want to talk about today is ancient wisdom something that I love I love ancient philosophy I love Marcus Aurelius and this was a quote I haven't seen in a while I'm gonna put it up on the screen and work on my fine editing chops but I'll, I'll go through this now it says the happiness of those who want to be popular depends on others underline the word others the happiness of those who seek pleasure fluctuates with moods outside of their control. Underline moods. But the happiness of the wise, underline wise, grows, underlined, out of their own free, triple underline, acts. So it's basically saying that if we're going to depend on others to be liked, to be popular, that's not in our control. Our happiness to seek pleasure from others, it depends on their moods. Um, someone you might meet out in public, your boss's mood, um, your co-worker's mood, your family's mood, your neighbor's mood, the mood of the content that you consume. All that stuff is outside of your control. But happiness of the wise grows out of their own free acts. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to break free focus on what is in my control what are some free acts that I can do within my control that can bring happiness well gratitude is one of them uh, having an attitude of gratitude and also gratitude journaling daily you're gonna find happiness that is of your own free acts random acts of kindness giving back smiling makes you feel good meditating that is our own we can do that getting outside more that is within our power Working out, exercising, find what works for you. Living below your means, that is within our free acts to bring us happiness and that will relieve stress in your life. Um, doing what you love is huge. I love waiting tables most days. Sometimes the environment is better than others, but I do what I love and I also love doing those side hustles and that leads to a happy life. If you don't, if you're not doing what you love, then Try your best to find a way to be able to do it. Start planning your escape right now. Start breaking free. Giving back, like I mentioned, prioritizing experiences over things. That is within our control. Decluttering is in our control, the minimalist philosophy. Resting is within our control. Hopefully we have enough time to rest. Eating healthy is within our control. All free acts that we don't need anyone else is permission to do that depends on their moods or anything else those are all within our control that can bring us happiness and as Marcus Aurelius says that is what the wise man or woman would do so I hope you're doing those let me know anything I missed that is within our control uh, reading can bring us happiness hobbies can bring us happiness all that is within our control and our jobs uh, is to break free and have the best day ever. And I think if you put all those into your life, you'll start having the best day ever. And the last topic I want to talk about today is the Noble Eightfold Path as taught by the Buddha. Okay, so a little recap of yesterday. We talked about the four noble truths. And this is just a very brief synopsis. I mean, there's books and books on this stuff. In yesterday's video, I linked a book it's kind of an intro to Zen Buddhism and the Four Noble Truths. Today, I'll link a book about the Eightfold Path that I, I read when I was searching for philosophy, when I was searching for a better way to live, when I was trying to find ways to find freedom in my life. And there's a lot of different ways 
that can help us find freedom. We take what we want and curate it that suits our needs. And some of that's going to be financial. Some of that's going to be spiritual. Some of that's going to be philosophical. Some of that's going to be hustle. Some of that's going to be through knowledge. And I think this Eightfold Path is definitely worth exploring. There are some things in it that I don't necessarily, or that I struggle to understand, I guess I should say, but I'll go through it real quick. And this whole Eightfold Path is a circle. Each one of these connects to the other one. It's not step one, step two, step three. It's all eight combined as a path to freedom. So the Four Noble Truths. Number one, there is suffering. Number two, what's the cause of suffering? And that is attachment. Number three, eliminating suffering is possible. And number four is to live a balanced life and to follow the Eightfold path, path, which will eliminate suffering. So number one, right speech. And that basically means to abstain from telling lies, from slander, from gossip, from harsh, rude, or impolite language. Easy enough, right speech. We can use that on our break-free journey. Number two, right action on the Eightfold Path. And that is going to be action that's aimed at being moral, action aimed at being honorable, peaceful conduct, no killing, no stealing, no illegitimate sexual um, happenings going on. Okay, that seems pretty good. Right action, be peaceful, don't kill, be faithful, uh, be moral, be honorable. All great things that we can use and explore more. This is just a very uh, tip of the iceberg explanation. Number three, right livelihood. This one I ponder at times. Um, ex abstain from making a living that may bring harm to people. Okay? Um, with, you know, dealing with weapons and, and killing and stuff like that. And this one always gets me serving intoxicating drinks or poisons, uh, killing animals. So basically to do something that's innocent, blameless, and uh, has no harm to others. So intoxicating drinks, that is uh, one that I underline and have read about now for years. And it's been in the back of my mind. Um, I don't know, can we find much in our society that doesn't have, that is innocent and blameless of harm to others? I guess. I guess we could. I guess intoxicating drinks as a waiter, I don't know. But also, I kind of see it as a little different. Maybe like I'm not serving drinks at a bar at 1 a.m. Um, you know, I'm serving some wine to some guests. Um, you know, they're not really getting hammered and, and driving home drunk. You know, people do leave a restaurant drunk on occasion, but not too often. So I, I'm curious about that, but perhaps just being a, an innocent server and not getting too crazy, hopefully that's okay. Um, let me know what you think. Right effort is number four on the eightfold path, and that's having an energetic will, getting up with the hustle gene, um, preventing evil, bringing out the good in yourself and others. Right effort um, to do what's right, to think what's right, to act right, to speak right, put your effort into finding a great livelihood. I think they all tie in, obviously. Number five, right mindfulness. I love mindfulness. Being aware, being mindful, being attentive to the activities of your body, the sensations or feelings, the activities of the mind, your ideas and your thoughts. And I think this is kind of mind-blowing. Like I was, I was never really aware of the sensations in my body or whether I was at peace or felt anxious, or the thought loop in your head that's not necessarily you, even being aware and just stopping that that endless loop that goes in, what's next, what's this person going to say, what do I got to do, I'm worried about this happening, right mindfulness, be aware of that stuff, be aware of your thoughts. Number six, right concentration on the Eightfold Path. Um, I thought this was pretty interesting, you basically, I think there's four levels, you start off with kind of like ill will and lust, you have that level of con concentration. Then you can graduate to joy and happiness. Maybe that's where I am. Then you can graduate to tranquility and joy. Just straight, just straight, calm and peaceful. And then finally, even above tranquility and joy, as it leaves even those kind of happy emotions down, 
and you're just calm and aware. And that is achieved through heavy meditation, I believe, by like the deepest monks in the world where they are beyond even just basic emotions, which maybe I don't want to go that far. Let's keep it, uh, let's keep the good. And from knowing the good, you got to see some bad, I guess. But so that's the definition of right concentration. Number seven on the eightfold path, right thought. And that is going to be thinking of detachment, love, nonviolence, and not just to everyone, but to all beings. And I try to be kind to the little bugs that come in the house. Sometimes, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I think about mowing the lawn. Like there's all these philosophical questions. Um, but I try to think right. I know I could think better as far as detachment. There's, you know, curbing that urge to want stuff. I like to window shop. I don't necessarily pull the trigger on purchases, but I do like to browse. Um, loving nonviolence to all beings. I think I'm, you know, pretty caring and empathetic person and, and try to respect um, all living creatures. So number seven, right thought. And then finally, r number eight is right understanding. And I love how this kind of ties in with number one. So what's the right understanding that we have to understand? Well, we have to understand the four noble truths. Suffering, the cause of suffering, there can be an end of suffering, and we can achieve the end of suffering through the Eightfold Path. Understanding things how they really are. So there's two types of knowledge in Buddhist philosophy. The first is just straight knowledge, knowing this, Eightfold Path, Knowing the Four Noble Truths. And there's other things to learn, like the Five Precipits and, and stuff that will be in the books that I definitely want to dig into. So there's that knowledge. And then you even go deeper than knowledge. And you get that through meditation. And that's pretty uh, interesting to think about. But I hope you got some value from this video. Get out there and side hustle. Work on your own free acts to find happiness, to bring joy to your life, whatever those acts might be, and take what you can from the Eightfold Path. This philosophy, um, you know, if we combine this philosophy with Stoic philosophy and with Christian beliefs and mesh them all up together with the Ten Commandments, I think we'll be pretty happy, peaceful, calm, tranquil and free people. So have a great day, break free, and I'll talk to you on the next video.